the Studio Lou. So it's time for my weekly wrap up video. So um, if you've been watching my videos uh, sort of consecutively, you will have already seen that I did a walkthrough video of this box. So this is something that I worked on this week. This is my sewing bee sewing box. So um, there's a full video on it, but I'll give you a quick sneak peek of it um, just for fun. Um, so yeah. This is what is inside, all sorts of goodies, scissors, scissor fob, case, fabric, etc. So if you want more details on that, I recommend going back one video from today um, to see the Sewing Bee sewing box. So that's what I've been working on. I'm going to be doing um, kind of different themed little sewing boxes like this that I'll be popping in my Etsy shop. Yesterday I did a little update in my Etsy shop. I added my um, LED yarns that I talked about in the video from last week's wrap up. So I got that done. Um, stitching stuff. So what have I been doing? Um, so I got 52 tags handmade. I got it started. I've, I've decided I like to start by doing like a glued or stitched like machine stitched on base for my tags because I'm doing them much larger than most people. Um, and then the actual hand stitching and stuff I will get started on this week is all about rings. And I don't have any like little metal or rubber rings. I've got to bug my husband to look at work to see if he can find something because he works in parts. But I do have these little kind of steampunky like wood um, rings that I bought like several years ago from Etsy the shop pork chop show he does um all of these different like wood cut laser cut printed things the other thing I'm thinking I want to incorporate will be shashi mirrors so these little stitched around mirrors this is actually the same stitch that um that she's demonstrating because you can tell how they've been stitched on and then at the back they're just um it's another kind of like they they stitch like a length and then they connect them in a circle at the back so um I think those could be fun incorporated into this too so I'm going to try to work on that throughout this week um I got started a little bit on this one this is another of those steampunky round rings so I might finish that one but then definitely try to find like um the rubber or metal rings. I wasn't anticipating such a bizarre um, inclusion, <laughs> but I will find one. In other stitching, um, so I have been working away, oopsie doo, on my stitch wheel. I just finished the second round um, of the wheel and I just finished the oak leaf uh, today. Some of these um, were a little bit tricky, like not super tricky. What I find though are the ones where you're layering up like a lot of stitches. I'm choosing to use a full embroidery floss on this. I know you should go down to two or three um, like threads from the the whole strand but I want this to be like punchy. I want it to stick out and have texture and I love how it's looking to be honest. It's It may not be for everyone that it's this bulky but it's exactly what I want and I really love how some of these have turned out like especially the kind of fern like ones they really make me happy so that's where we are with that I'm going to be tackling the round the third round um today probably later maybe I don't know one or two of these a day and then I've kind of had enough of one project uh then moving on to what I what else am I doing here my, my Halloween town so I got a little bit more done on Halloween Town from Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. Um, it is, I got the little girl here done, um, part of her done. She's not completely done. She still needs her little witch hat. Um, I also got the boring stitches done, which is the light violet stuff, which is the color that is the most similar to the background. That's always what like gets me what bores me is anything like when you're stitching white stitches on top of almost white fabric it's the one that takes me the longest to get through <laughs> so that's where I am with that I've made no progress on any other stitching really I've done a little bit on my um the fairy tale sampler that I showed you last wrap up but I it's not worth showing <laughs> 
then we're going to move on to paper stuff. Okay, so this was my challenge for last week's um, 52 Tags Handmade, which was Suffolk Puffs or Yo-Yos, as they're more commonly known, um, and Lace. So this tag was a lot of fun to make, actually. I really loved it. Um, so I didn't really like making the Yo-Yos, to be honest. I got to a point where I literally looked up the Clover Yo-Yo Maker and was like, I need this. And then I was like, no, I don't. I'm just being lazy and I'm never going to make that many Yo-Yos in my life that I require a Yo-Yo Maker. So I just persevered. Um, first, I had made them a little too small anyways. I wanted some... Um, so I made them a little bigger. They felt easier because I had made this teeny... A little bitty one did a bunch of French knots here then um, I cut out some silk organza leaves and just kind of um, did some stitching on them that I uh, I fly stitch I just fly stitched over them and then um, this is a piece of like treasured embroidery I don't even know if I'd call it embroidery to be honest it is tiny little almost looks Added or something um or the, it's like lace making but this is from my friend who lives in Qatar and there is a store there called the Taliban store which is actually a word that gets abused in North American society it means student um and it sell like they sell all sorts of these amazing textile trims that we would typically associate with things like saris or just like middle eastern um textiles and those kind of things so yeah this is super treasured but I used a little piece of it here and I'm so happy with it there um there's the lace I used some of this fun um this was for my latest thrift haul this fun trim that I got stitched it on top and I did some um transfer rubbing and some just hand cross stitching around um and I did some cross stitches around this puff and then just did some um pistol stitching around here and added this little um crochet embroidered flower that I made forever ago <laughs> so I'm really happy with how this tag turned out so I'm I'm really enjoying just looking at all the work I've done. Let me grab them. So all these tags so far, I'm like so happy with them. Like they really get you working on in a different way. And you're, we're going to end up with this incredible collection of tags. Like I don't even know how I'm going to use them. And I know a lot of people are making like the little bitty ones um, from like that set of um, like those paper tags that you can buy, which I'm not doing. Um, I'm, I'm cutting out my own. So they're all different sizes and that's absolutely how I wanted it. <laughs> so I'm really happy about them though. Like I, I'm learning a lot doing this challenge, first of all, but secondly, like the work that I'm left with, I'm really happy about like it's really fun and I've used a lot of different materials and so yeah these are really good <laughs> so if you haven't jumped in on this challenge it's not too late I, I mean it. I, I only jumped in on week five and then I totally caught up so then what else have I been doing okay so um I was making some ephemera I forget now why. Oh, I was using up scraps. So I made like, um, if you watch some of my videos through the week, this is just kind of recap of what I was doing, um, making things for the Tinker Lab challenge and some other things. I'm starting a series where I am book busting a book. So these are from this book. So it's called like, um, all animals have fun or something and it's got really cute illustrations in it that's really 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 fun so that I'm going to be doing probably another video on that maybe later tonight if I have time I don't know if I'll upload it tonight or tomorrow but I did pre-cut a couple of illustrations out of it already um that are here so these will be like the next ones that I incorporate um but yeah this is the book itself it's just it's got a lot of fun 
different kinds of illustrations in it and I just want to use it to make ephemera. Um, I'm, I've set kind of a personal challenge for myself because when I first recently when I first got into making journals and stuff you know it takes you to thrift stores and you start buying books um, both for the purpose of making journals with the covers and for the purpose of like breaking them down for you know the ones that have amazing illustrations to make ephemera and such out of. Um, so my challenge to myself is to bring both of those the population I have down a little bit. Sorry, I just have to drop it back in my ephemera box. So um, yeah, I am also trying to bring my scraps down because my scrap paper that's left over because like, you know, I just don't want to have a lot of stuff everywhere all the time. Um, then I'll talk about books that I got this week. So a couple of things. So there's this one, Doodle Stitching Embroidery Art. Um, I just decided to pick this up because like I am doing so much embroidery and um, other stitching that I'm like cross stitching and stuff. And I just kind of thought like it was a nice just little book to kind of keep me inspired and like it's got um, a lot of really cute projects in it. And it also it has... Um, patches so this is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time is like getting into embroidering my own patches like these um I want to do a few of those because I think it's really fun and it's also got some nice ideas about like you know embroidering on transparent mesh and um yeah it's it's a nice book it's got a lot of good ideas in it and it's got nice patterns for embroidery so yeah fun fun then let's talk about this so this book paper mache from art makers by sarah hand is a step-by-step -step guide to creating more than a dozen adorable paper mache projects and this speaks to my heart this style this whimsical sweet kind of style totally me also want to do it with the kiddo um and get her doing some fun paper mache it has amazing ideas like making a planter out of a plastic water bottle. So great way to be more eco-friendly and also plants. I don't usually plant in a lot of plastic, but you know, I can. Um, the things won't, you know, if I'm not eating them especially, they're fine. And what we made, so, oh, and I forgot to mention this. Hold on. Last Thursday, she did an Instagram live. Um, she's on Instagram. I will link to her below. I'll link to all this stuff. Um, I think it's Sarah Hand Art on Instagram. And she did an Instagram live last Thursday to walk us through making a bird. So we were allowed to kind of shape it however we wanted. And she walked us through a bunch of the steps. It's going to be probably a three-parter. Um, but what I did is just got the bird made so it's like it's cardboard in the middle we crunched it all up and shaped our bird this is like thin cereal box kind of cardboard as you see me working with all the time um and then we made a tin foil beak and um I'm allowed to say all this because she shared it live you know it's not secret from her book um and then we masking taped the entire thing because that keeps it dry when you start your paper mache process oh my goodness look at all these sparkle threads if you're if you see all these things this is not hair it is called angelina fiber let me show you what it is so you see this this bag of gold <laughs> this is what this is so it's almost as bad as glitter but it doesn't travel like glitter but I had a bunch of it in this bin before I stuck my bird in it. So the other thing I made are the legs. These are wire. She recommends floral wire. I did not have any. So I, I do have decently heavy gauge, um, like stainless steel wire. Uh, and so this will be for the legs and they won't be this long. Part of them are going to poke inside the body and then they're going to bend. So I will do the rest of this next this upcoming Thursday um because she's going to go live again I believe at 8 p.m you can check her Instagram she's posting there about her schedule for her workshop um she also talked about there was another woman who was um 
in her life um, with her kind of helping her out also she has a book from the art makers series and it is um, empowered embroidery and it looks really cool it has like a Frida Kahlo embroidery on the front um, so I might check that book out I might ch check out her channel because my understanding is she's also going to be doing um, a live like they were supporting one another with their lives and so this book is so fun I'm so stoked to get going on it look at this little dog in like this plaid shirt you know it's just I don't know she's got kind of like this aesthetic that I like that's like wacky like this is so me anyone who saw this and knows me be like that Cindy's that's Cindy's right that's from her house so <laughs> this is totally my aesthetic I, I like these very happy like I am an adult child kind of things so if you want to learn about paper mache, I found her to be very sweet um, and very cool. And like, I'm really stoked to be learning from her and taking part in a totally free workshop. So check it out on Thursday. Drop in there. Even if you didn't do part one, you could do part one yourself. Really, let me tell you quickly. Make a shape of a bird, a head and a body um, out of cardboard and then cover it and attach it with masking tape then cut out two wings and a tail um, in the shapes that you want and cover them in masking tape then uh, to masking tape them to the body make a little beak out of tin foil cover it in masking tape attach it you need four pieces of wire this has to be strong enough to hold up the bird once you paper mache it so use four pieces floral wire is what she recommends it's green it's thicker than this um, and still four pieces and then just attach them together wrap masking tape around them but leave what will become the toes this wire leave it out the bottom even cover the tip okay and they have to be long enough to go inside your bird about an inch and then another inch is going to be bent okay so that is basically the quick synopsis of what we learned so you want to take part? Do, do, do. Um, okay, let me move away from library acquisitions here. Two, what what am I doing with journals? Also, this fabric down here, I put it here for a reason, not just to be fancy. Um, I'm going to be making myself a tunic out of this. Um, it is from a t-shirt pattern called like the Easy Tee or something um, that I modified and I'm going to make it longer um, and make myself a nice tunic out of this. So that's why it's here because it's kind of like a work in progress. So the Poison Garden journals. Where are we with these guys? Did I forget about them completely? No. So <clears throat> where we are is that we have the signatures cut out uh, or cut down rather. We have two journals. Um, and so this one, I don't know if you can see, it says Wicked Lovely and this is the Poison Trail. So we've got the signatures. They are cut. They are good to go. We're going to be, I've got the spine done for this one. I did a curved spine. Um, I gotta make the spine for this one, <clears throat> probably today, but I've gotta press the papers too. So there are a lot of really fun papers. Eco dye paper, like, hello, poison journal, poison garden journal. Um, <clears throat> I have not yet been arrested for my Google searching of poison plants. My husband is still breathing and happy, so we're all good there. <laughs> like I said, I hope no one goes through my Google results because they'll wonder um, what's going on. So I've got some fun pages. I'm going to use these nice chapter pages in the Wicked Lovely book as little chapter tabs. Um, five signatures in the small one, seven in the large is what I'm planning. And I've got a whole ton of ephemera that I need to make for these. So I'll probably be doing a bit of that this week too. Um, other than that, I 
haven't been up to a whole lot. Well, I have, but like nothing interesting. Today I went for um, a walk in our local cemetery, a different one. Um, and so it's cold today because of the wind. The wind chill is really chilly. Um, and I noticed when I went to the graveyard, so something just to be wary of if you are a gardener or a tree planter or you, you know, care about land, you have land, whatever. Um, the graveyard has a very diverse population of trees and I mean not super diverse but probably about six or seven different you know they've got elms oaks cedar um, maple uh, some different evergreens uh, the only trees not affected were the evergreens I noticed so there's a moth called the European gypsy moth and um, it has kind of ravaged North America and it is crazy. It is terrible. Um, it is a terrible moth and it is basically killing plants. Like so let me just find a picture of what I witnessed today so I can share it with you so you can be wary of these bad guys. Um, <clears throat> so here, let me just get under here so I can make sure you can see this. So do you see, this is a tree. All of these white things here are these disgusting sacks of, it's like a cottony sack with these little tiny eggs inside of it. And all of this grubby stuff on the outside, well, those are actually the casings of the last season's cicadas. So yuck but um yeah that is what to expect from the gypsy european gypsy moth up close this is what it looks like it's really gross um so yeah these are totally destroying trees they basically they destroy the bark of the tree so you can see there's those casings from these guys <laughs> all pretty gross but I just wanted to share it with you as um you know I think it's important to take care of our environment that's part of my thing that I do um you know in making junk journals you know you're using things up you're um trying to prevent landfill you're trying to reuse and be economical and all those things so look out for the yucky European gypsy moth um anyways that is my story for today and i hope you're all well and enjoying this weekend and i will talk to you soon please subscribe we are four subscribers away from 150 and i have a gift for everyone that i'm going to drop at 150 so thank you again and take care all my social media info is down below in the description box bye